Today we're looking at Fort Donaldson. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. Early in the Civil War, the Union was suffering setback after setback in the war. Early defeats at battles such as Bull Run and Wilson's Creek had caused many in the North to really lose hope in maintaining the Union. However, in late 1861 and early 1862, Ulysses S. Grant began leading Union forces to victories in the Western theater of the war, where the Union was trying to gain control of the Mississippi River as well as the Mississippi River Valley. The Confederacy was attempting to maintain a long line of defense through Tennessee and Kentucky. Two of their primary defenses of the region were Fort Henry on the Tennessee River and Fort Donaldson on the Cumberland River. Grant knew that if the Union could capture these forts, it would open the way for Union invasion into Tennessee and into the Deep South. Furthermore, a Union victory here would leave Nashville, a Confederate transportation center, vulnerable. On February 6, 1862, a flotilla of Union ironclad steamboats attacked Fort Henry and easily forced the Confederates to surrender before Union forces could even reach the fort. A majority of the Confederate forces defending Fort Henry had actually already left the fort and had gone to reinforce Fort Donaldson just 10 miles away. Grant and his army now pushed their way towards Fort Donaldson, but it was not easy as a winter storm set in, slowing their march and giving Confederate forces time to prepare for an attack at Fort Donaldson. Here within Fort Donaldson, there were approximately 16,000 troops under the command of General John B. Floyd and second in command General Gideon Pillow, then third in command General Simon Buckner, who was a good friend of Ulysses S. Grant from their days together at the West Point Military Academy. Grant's forces numbered over 24,000. On February 14, 1862, Union gunboats came down the Cumberland River just behind me. Confederates could easily see the boats approaching from their high vantage point overlooking the river and they opened fire with their big guns. Several of the Union boats were heavily damaged and they were unable to force the Confederates out as they had done at Fort Henry. Despite winning victory over the Union gunboats, that night the Confederate commanders met and knew that Grant would soon be attacking with his ground forces and they needed to get out of Fort Donaldson. The only problem was the Union troops were blocking the one road to Nashville that was their one mode of escape. But the next morning on February 15th, the Confederates launched an early morning attack against the right side of the Union line. The Confederates were able to push the Union back and opened the way for escape, but surprisingly, just as it looked as if the Confederacy had won, Confederate General Gideon Pillow ordered his troops to retreat back into the fort. Seeing the opportunity, General Grant ordered his troops to attack and retake the ground that they had just lost, as well as launch a full-on assault on the right side of the Confederate line. Here behind me, you can see the remnants of the Confederate earthworks that the Union soldiers stormed and forced the Confederates back. As the sun went down on February 15th, the Confederate were still trapped inside Fort Donaldson, and Grant was poised to attack the fort the next day. That evening, the Confederate commanders of Floyd and Pillow and Buckner met and decided the only thing to do was to surrender the fort. Generals Floyd and Pillow both boarded steamboats and made their escape, leaving Simon Buckner to surrender to his friend Grant. Buckner sent a message to Grant asking what terms or conditions Grant would offer. Grant responded by saying no terms except unconditional and immediate surrender can be accepted. This earned U.S. Grant the nickname Unconditional Surrender Grant. On February 16, 1862, General Buckner and General Grant met here at the Dover Hotel and Buckner officially surrendered Fort Donaldson and the troops within it to the Union Army. In all here, there had been close to 2,700 Union casualties, killed, wounded, missing, or captured. While for the Confederates, there were 13,800 casualties as they surrendered their entire force there at Fort Donaldson. The victory here in February of 1862 for the Union at Fort Donaldson is considered to be the first major victory of the war for the Union and thrust Ulysses S. Grant into the national spotlight that would eventually lead to him taking command of the entire Union Army and after the war becoming President of the United States. But immediately following the victory here for Grant, he continued to push south and by April of 1862 would be approaching the Confederate Railroad Center at Corinth in northern Mississippi. But before he could reach Corinth, the Confederates attack and the Battle of Shot occurs, but that is for another bell ringer. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.